Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-88. The previous episode featured the party running from an orc pack across the frontier, only to be squaring off with a manacore near a creek. Several members of the party sustained injuries, but none seemed to be life-threatening at this time. They are attempting to get to Fort Myers outpost to meet up with the secretive Hagrid Toulouse. They hope that this individual may offer them guidance into how to clear their name and get the syndicate to call off the bounty for them. We rejoin them as they reach a cliff overlooking a mountain pass where the outpost sits. A steady drizzle has soaked each PC straight through the clothes. The group stood on the precipice overlooking the valley. Plumes of smoke rise from the settlement that is nestled between the high mountain peaks that is guarded at several places. The heights cause the wind to whip around, making the wet group even more uncomfortable. There appears to be a good way down over here, pointed out Cabe Silvertongue. The group returned to their horses and began to lead the mounts down a narrow but navigatable path on the side of the mountain. With the rain increasing in intensity, the adventurers opted to walk the mounts down rather than to risk a misstep and pitching a rider and mount over the side. With 100 feet scaled, the group had to make a sharp turn to continue using the path. This twist was handled expertly by everyone with only Karina and Peepers to go. Watching the others make the turn, she followed in their footsteps that were quickly filling with rainwater. Moving gingerly, the waif landed on a small stick that rolled under her feet and she quickly pitched over the edge, screaming. Peepers, the axe beak, attempted to snap her foot, but missed and nearly went over the edge as well. The others heard the scream and quickly spun around to see Karina spinning over the side of the mountain. Fear crossed their faces as their companion began to fall to her doom, but a blue gleam caught everyone's eyes. The ring that the waif had recovered earlier began to emit a glow as the rest of the group watched her fall slowed dramatically and she began to swing slowly from left to right. Puzzled at the reaction, everyone turned to Lady Irena who shook her head and raised her hands. Sister Elaine spotted the ring emitting the glow and pointed out that it must have been enchanted. The mage added that she was familiar with the spell Featherfall but had never seen it in action. The pair mused that the magical ring must have been enchanted to protect its wearer from dangerous falls. The initial yelling from Karina had changed to laughter as she realized she was floating and took to enjoying the ride down. Her squeals of joy were stopped as she yelled to the rest of the group, I'll see you at the bottom! Peepers cocked his head at the simple intellect and could not understand anything other than its mistress was no longer in danger. Twenty minutes later, the rest of the group rejoined Karina at the bottom of the peak. Sitting under an overhang, out of the rain, she inquired what had taken the group so long. They gathered around the young woman and remarked at her healthy condition. Peppering her with questions of what it was like, she smiled broadly and recanted the free sensation that she had experienced. Bulger, the former sailor, inquired if he could try it out and Karina offered him the ring. <clears throat> he ran up to the trail to the point where it was about eight feet above ground. Putting on the ring, he flung himself over the precipice only to discover that the ring did not stop his fall and he landed face first onto the rocky ground. The group ran over to the prone gnome and noticed that he had sustained only minor injuries. An argument broke out about the value of the ring, but it was Lady Irena that pointed out that the enchantment was probably only designed to prevent a deadly fall and surmised that there must be a height requirement. Karina asked Bolger if he wanted to go higher and retest it, but the gnome wiped the blood from his nose and declined the opportunity. He did point out that the jewelry did resize itself to fit his sausage-shaped fingers and returned it to the waif who donned it on her dainty fingers. With everything in order, the group remounted the animals and headed off in the direction of the fortified settlement known as Fort Myers. A half hour later, the rain-soaked group reached the exterior gates that were guarded by men and women who were equally damp. After questioning, 
The timber doors opened and the party was allowed entry but found themselves in a stockade fence. The guards demanded that the party turn over their weapons as only authorized personnel were allowed to keep uh, such items on their persons. The Delvers were told that the daggers could be kept, but all other implements of battle had to be surrendered during the time inside the military outpost. The group began to hedge, but were told that they were free to leave if they didn't like it. If they opted to go through town to the other side, their weapons would be transferred by the guards and given to them at that time. Speaking in hushed tones, the group bantered about losing their weapons, but Lady Arena advised that the guards couldn't take away her spells, and the walls seemed to be quite safe from anything outside the fort. Disgruntled, but acquiescing, the men and women turned over their weapons and received a token to a locker that the items would be kept in. The stockade fence opened, and the guards stared at the entrance of the axe beak. Some seemed concerned of its appearance, while others marveled at it. One of the guards pointed out that a livery service was available just down the road, and the fort had several inns and taverns. Fargus inquired if a Hagrid Toulouse was present in town, but the guard stated she had never heard of the individual. She suggested going to the inns to see if that individual had checked in anywhere. Well, we could split up to cover more ground, inquired the bard. The group thought for a few moments and agreed that it was probably the best solution. Fargus and Karina took possession of the mounts and headed to the livery, while Cabe teamed up with Sister Elaine, and Lady Irena went with the now non-bleeding Bulger to begin canvassing the ends of the fort. They agreed to meet at the town square near the visible center of the community. Going their separate ways, the quartet seeking out the ends made a side bet on who would be finding the stranger first. It was decided that six gold pieces would go to the winning team that located the benefactor first, and each raced ahead to win that bet. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening. <laughs>